I am one of the LSE 7. We protested against the genocide in Gaza, and now our university is punishing us. A year ago, when the genocide of Palestinians started in Gaza, uh, students across the world, across the UK and at LSE, started taking actions to protest what was happening because, frankly, um, as students, this is probably the worst atrocities we've ever seen in our lifetime. The Palestine Society at the LSE reached out to the school management to demand a meeting and to um, ask to engage in uh, discussions regarding the school's investment. They were told that investment are not about ethics, um, they're about risk. They were told that it is necessary to invest in weapons because what if um, we get attacked the school leadership then decided to completely cut contact and they refused to further meet with the Palestine Society. Fast forward to the month of April, the encampment took place in the Marshall Building, which is LSE's biggest um, and most expensive building, um, and it lasted 35 days. During the encampment, um, the LSE Islamic Society and the LSE Palestine Society joined forces and were joined by dozens of students um, to engage in dialogue and negotiation with the university. The LSE decided to make history by being the first university in the UK to take the students to court, um, take its students and staff actually to court and to um, evict them, forcefully evict them from the building. And that whole happened on the Eid weekend. So while students were celebrating Eid with their family, uh, they had to worry about uh, decamping, taking the tents out and everything, and we were effectively um, banned from the building and evicted on the day of Eid. We held a protest on the 7th of July. Um, a week later, seven of us received a letter that um, informed us that we were banned from campus um, and placed under precautionary measures as part of a disciplinary process. Because we've been banned from campus, the school has prevented us from uh, accessing medical care and meeting our GPs. Um, and we have also been prevented from accessing prayer space or religious space uh, and meeting with our support system and community, whether that be teachers, um, LSE staff or students. And one of the worst impact this has had on us is that uh, it's been really hard for us to deal with the, the content of the allegation and what LSE has said um, because although the protest was people just chanting, wearing kufiyas um, and holding banners in the letter, LSE described it as something that was dangerous. They compared it to 7-7 seven -seven, um, and they said that it was frightening and scary because people were wearing kufiyas. And this has really highlighted um, how Islamophobic and racist the LSE is as an institution. And that's not new um, because last year uh, the LSEI SOC, so the Islamic Society, released an entire report that highlighted how uh, deep and institutional the uh, Islamophobia was at LSE. And they showed how students um, who were visibly Muslim had been discriminated against by the school and by the staff. While LSE has tried to isolate us, we have actually been met with so much support from members of our community and far beyond. Um, a UN official even intervened and sent a letter to LSE last week criticizing the disciplinary measures that have been taken against us. Even though the LSE has taken disciplinary action against students who protest the genocide, um, activism does not stop on campus and students are still mobilizing and they're still committed to hold the university accountable for its complicit in genocide. We really need your help. You can support the LSE 7 by signing the petition, tag LSE in the comment and let them know what you think and share this video.